Hello everybody. Let's be honest, the story about the two people walking to Emmaus sounds pretty strange. These people, they meet a stranger, they don't recognise him. They invite him to eat with them, and then they suddenly become aware the person is Jesus. And at that very moment, he disappears. You can't get much stranger than that, folks. So first there's a place called Emmaus, and it's a word you might be familiar with because all over the world there are organisations that have taken that name. The name comes from the Bible, but it's only ever mentioned once, and it's in this story. We're told it's about seven miles from Jerusalem. And what's interesting is that Emmaus has never been found. No archaeologist has ever found a place that could likely be the remains of this place. Nothing in all history has been discovered that looks like it could be the location of Emmaus. So that's strange. And then there's the names of the people in the incident. Only one of them gets a name. And the name is Cleopas. And that's the only time in the Bible anyone is ever called Cleopas. Although that was a name in antiquity, it was used, and it's a man's name. And as I say, beside Cleopas, the other follower doesn't get a name. For some reason, certainly in paintings and maybe in our imagination, we've tended to think it's another man. I don't know why that has to be. It could have been Cleopas' wife that was with him, or his girlfriend, or his mother, or his daughter. It could have been anyone, really. And then Jesus appears, and they don't recognise him. So why? Did he not look like Jesus? It would seem like he didn't. And then they do recognise him. So what happened then? Did he suddenly look different? Did his appearance change in some way? They're convinced the person is Jesus, and at the exact same moment, Jesus sort of disappears. So this is a very vague and seriously, seriously mysterious story. But I think all that vagueness is actually important. Emmaus doesn't stand for one place. Emmaus stands for every place. Wherever we go on in life, God is with us all the time. Sometimes we're aware of God, sometimes not so much. Now, when we read the Emmaus story, that seems like a long way from us, uh, not just in terms of history and geography, but it's just outside our experience. When was the last time we were walking down the road to Emmaus? When did we ever meet somebody called Cleopas? When did we meet a stranger in the road who starts explaining the meaning of life to us? And when did we ask that person to share a meal with us? When did that person do some action that made you realize, make us realize who he really was? And how could somebody suddenly look different and morph into somebody else? When has that ever happened in our experience? And when did somebody disappear before our very eyes, but leaving us with feelings of joy and wonder and excitement? So in one way, this story today is totally foreign to our experience. We've not seen anything like it, we would say. But get this. Here's what I want to say today. That same story is, in fact, exactly our experience. It's the experience of all of us. We're all on a journey. We might call it our journey through life. We might call it our spiritual journey. We might be in the journey with other people all around us, or we might feel we're on our own. But we are never on our own. On our journey, we are never out of God's sight. God goes with us. Christ, if you like, is always walking beside us. But do we recognise him all the time? No. Then, sometimes we do. Something happens. And we just get a brief sense of God. A sense of the other. 
a sense of something greater and bigger than ourselves. It might be a very important thing, something like the birth of a baby or a healing, or it might be as trivial as looking across the water or reading something out of a book or listening to some music or a sudden sense of gratitude, a sense of God with us. And does that sense of God's presence stick with us all the time? No. Now, there may be some people that want to say yes. Some people may say they are always close to God. They're always aware of God's presence. Well, I don't know quite how to respond to that. If that's you, then that's great. But it's just not my own experience. And I'm pretty sure it's not the experience of most of us. Our experience of connection to God comes and goes. And yet the fact of it is always true. The travellers on the way to Emmaus were not aware of Jesus for most of the story. But Jesus was with them for all of the story. He was there the whole time. And we, not, we may not be aware of God we may not always be tuned in to God, but God goes with us every moment of every day. In fact, just like today's story, it's often after the event that we realise that God has blessed us or strengthened us or given us courage or after the event, we just realise that God has been near. Now, because Jesus was recognised in the breaking of bread, and because communion is our action, when we remember this and we break bread together, and it's a time when we often feel close to God. Some people think the Emmaus story is just a big advert for communion. Personally, I don't think so. I think when we share bread and wine, that's a very important time. And obviously, it is a time when we can draw near to God. But that's clearly not the only way we do it. Just being part of worship, even Zoom worship, or being part of a faith community, that can draw us close to God. So can taking time to read scripture. So can just seeking out time for quiet and meditation and prayer. So can caring for the lonely and the forgotten and the excluded. So can standing up for the poor, working for justice and peace, and contributing to making this world a better place. There are all kinds of things we can do as followers of Christ that bring us closer to God and make it more likely that we'll encounter God. But in the end, it's always a wee bit vague and mysterious. But that doesn't make it unreal. Some of the most important things in all of our lives are exactly like this. Think of what it's like when you fall in love or maybe even better, think of your feelings for somebody else, some other person who you totally admire, who inspires you. It's sometimes hard to explain that fully to another person. Or think of the way you react to a piece of music or your favourite book or how you're impacted positively or negatively by an item of news. All of these things can be quite hard for us to explain or to write down for someone else to read, but they're often at the heart of our lives. The things that move us deeply, the things that we're passionate about, our hopes and our dreams, they're sometimes hard to articulate to other people, but they are very real and meaningful and essential to us. Sometimes we may feel close to God, other times we may feel far away. But the Emmaus story comes along to remind us of this truth, that no matter what we might be feeling, God does not abandon us on our journey through life. And God is always with us, waiting to be encountered, and wanting to bring meaning and purpose to what we're doing. Thanks be to God.